Hi everybody and welcome to Positivity. We are very lucky today because we have yet another diamond. Hello Hannah. Hi, nice Hi. to be here and chat to someone even if it is via Zoom again. <laughs> yes, the importance of talking through lockdown to techno embracing technology massively. Um, so you have been nominated by your mum, who was nominated by your sister. Um, so we are experiencing some very positive vibes in your family. Is that, is that always the case? <laughs> uh, well, I was quite surprised that my mum nominated me because she is the one who's had to deal with all of my meltdowns over the years when sailing hasn't quite been going right or I've taken on a bit too much. So um, I guess it's nice that she thought I was maybe a bit positive, but a bit surprised. <laughs> Positive and proud, I imagine, as a mummy. <laughs> um, so you've just touched on it there, um, but what is it that you do, um, just to share with everybody, and how has the wonderful world of COVID impacted on, on that? So I am a professional sailor. Um, I've done all kinds of different types of sailing, from Olympic sailing to round the world ocean racing. And most recently, I sail uh, race boats for private owners. Um, and our season has been completely cancelled so far. So we usually race from March to October, uh, either in the UK or um, around Europe. And so far there's been absolutely no racing. So um, it's been a bit of a case of wait and see what happens. And, you know, we haven't expected to be going straight back to racing, but at the same time, we're just kind of waiting for that next bit of news to see when we can get back up on the water um, and go racing again. I think that's um, the hardest thing, isn't it? It's like the not knowing on the time scale. As soon as you know that, I think everyone will be able to sort of cope much better and be able to plan, which we all love to do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, so in sailing, if there's if the weather's not quite right, you'll quite often have a postponement, which means that, um, say you've got a start time of 11 o'clock, if the wind isn't looking great, um, it's either too windy or there's not enough wind, you have a flag signal on shore to stick, say, wait, the start time will be pushed back. So we're quite used to waiting, could be one, two, three, four hours, that start time could be pushed back. Um, and we always say at the end of that day, like if you'd have been told to sit in the same place for four hours, you wouldn't have been able to do it. But when you don't know what the end point is, you just kind of get on with other things until you're told to go. So yeah. I guess in a smaller way, we're quite used to waiting and not knowing when to go. Um, but this has obviously gone on for quite a lot longer than just one race day at the moment. Yeah. But I guess you're used to suddenly times changing and ad adapting and like you say on a, much, on a much different time scale but at least your mindset is there to be able to, to do that which I think a lot of people are really struggling with. Mm. <laughs> Especially students I think that when they don't know when they're back at school which some are probably embracing and some aren't. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is obviously positivity um, and we ask for everybody to come on with a cuppa in hand. Um, have you got have you got a cup of tea with you? I do. I've Amazing. got quite a hot cup of tea here. Nice. And is it is it a builders? Is it a flavoured tea? What have we got? So this is a Yorkshire tea just with milk. And for me there's no other tea. This is the one. <laughs> and I yeah, I don't have a lot more to say on it. Just I drink a lot of this. <laughs> and that's what we like to hear. Proper proper Yorkshire tea. In lockdown I've probably been drinking <laughs> between six and seven a day um and yeah, hopefully exactly. that will continue out of lockdown as well because i'm enjoying that <laughs> yeah no that's we're pleased to hear it i mean i've been hearing lots of people come on saying all these flavored teas but mm. yeah i'm a builder's tea girl yeah, yeah. Well. glad, really glad to hear that you are as well and <laughs> <laughs> um, so apart from drinking lots of tea each day um you're obviously a very active person and the, everything's changed now we're sort of entering a different phase of lockdown but how did you, how did you keep active, keep positive, keep social? Lots of different ways um, in in the start, and will that continue as we as we go through to the next phase? Um, well, so the first phase of lockdown, when it came in at the beginning, uh, pretty much all water sports were, well, they weren't banned, but they were against the guidelines. So um, that was pretty strange to be off the water for uh, almost three months, I think. Um, especially you know when it was coming into spring and the weather was really nice um, so because we were allowed to go and do our one daily exercise and I live quite near the sea it was pretty nice to 
ride my road bike um, as part of my kind of physical training, but also just ride along the coast um, and see, even if we couldn't be on the water, just look at the area that we would normally be racing. Uh, that kind of definitely kept my sanity a little bit to be able to see the water, um, even if we weren't allowed to be in it or on it. Um, and then since then, um, since the guidelines have been re relaxed a little bit and we've been allowed back on the water, whilst we're not able to race, um, I normally race boats with 10, 11 people, so we're quite a way off being allowed to do that, I think. But um, kite surfing, paddle boarding, um, is, this is kind of what we all like to do anyway. Everyone who lives around here um, loves getting on the water, so that's been really nice. And like paddle boarding and kite surfing really lend themselves to be being socially distant. So um, we've been really, really lucky in that respect and having a bit of free time to have some hobbies. Um, which we don't normally have so that's actually been really really nice and, it, and is that something that um, you're obviously incredibly busy traveling lots in normal time do you think you will now make time for those hobbies more during during like, when life gets in the way yeah definitely I mean I used to quite often like try and go for a run even if it was just 30 minutes or something before a race day just to kind of get my mind in gear get myself up and out and it also also gives you a chance to look at what the weather's doing pretty early in the morning and that will set you up for the day but um i hadn't really been into paddle boarding before and actually it's so easy it takes just a couple of minutes to get yourself on the water um, and it's such a refreshing start to the day um using the mornings and evenings as best as possible you know like at the moment it doesn't get dark till half nine ten o'clock um, and using that time to be outside um normally i think it's really easy to come in and be a bit tired and be like oh make dinner then i will watch tv or read a book or something but just making the most of being outside as much as possible hopefully i'll continue to do that yeah and embrace it embrace it mm -hmm. as you can um because yeah like you say i think this has taught us that we don't know what is around the corner i mean you were saying before we started recording that you had a really quiet winter because you were leading into a, a very busy summer but actually that's all changed so you never know what's going to happen and, and how things are, are going to change so keep it up and keep active and keep smiling and and like you say your um the hobbies that you have lend themselves to be able to share that with other people um which is obviously must be really well must be great for you um to see friends and so on throughout this time yeah it's really nice um a lot of my friends live quite far away so that's been a bit of a shame that i can't see them it's not that kind of I don't see them as often as I'd like to anyway um, and I think we've actually been keeping in touch more using our phones and video calling and things like that than we normally would and setting a kind of time in the week to catch up with them um, because I guess the routine's been completely thrown out and we've had a chance to rebuild it in a way that we wouldn't have otherwise um, I do have a bit of a feeling that this like is meant to be a bit of a reset for everyone to work out what's important to them um and i don't i'm not really into any kind of hippie ideas or fate or anything but like it's just kind of definitely sent a message to me that we need to work out what's important to us and go with that um and everything else can kind of fall by the wayside it doesn't matter as long as you've got the things that are important to you around you Oh, I completely agree. I mean, I feel like I've never been as close to my school friends as I have yeah. done since school because one, it's so difficult to get a group of friends that live in different places in the same room, but actually just to hop on a Zoom call it's, yeah. I, and you actually have proper conversations, yeah. I think. Um, uh, uh, although I am not happy when I have to do a quiz, seeing as I'm coming bottom of every quiz. Yeah, I've <laughs> but I've discovered that I have very little general knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Or people are picking questions on things that I don't know about. I'm not sure what it is yeah. yet. <laughs> I could go. I could go up at the um, the leaderboard on the sport round, but yeah, yeah. that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> and Henry the Eighth. I'm really good on Henry the Eighth. Who is top of the diamond leaderboard in the in your family quizzes? Um, my mum has done very well on some of the quizzes um, and my dad actually surprised us all when he won one of the weeks. We thought he was the most likely to be last in all of them. <laughs> but we've had quite a good mix of the rounds that we do, do change each week. Yeah. So we've tried to make it uh, something for everyone. 
actually the worst round I had, my boyfriend did a, a Rob round, so questions about him, and I actually came last on that <laughs> round. <laughs> it was a bit embarrassing. Um, no, how did that? How did that go? How did the relationship go after that? For it did, well, he tried not to bias it to, towards me too much, like things I would know, and I just think he went a little bit too far. They were quite niche questions. <laughs> I think. The others just guessed better than I did. Yeah, sure. We'll go with that, Hannah. We'll yeah. go with that. <laughs> for the sake of your relationship. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Um, now, obviously, another big thing through lockdown has been um, lots of binge watching of Netflix, people coming up finding new podcasts, new books. Um, I certainly have. Um, is there anything that you have found, um, either that has been around for a while or um, is new, that you would recommend? Um, so I think most of the... 10 series of friends has been watched on the TV, but I'm really bad at watching TV. I'll put it on and then go and do something else and come back and realize that I haven't actually seen any of it. So yeah, while friends has been on the back in the background, I wouldn't say I've actually watched very much of it. Um, but that's a good go to, isn't it? Because you know, the, you know, the episodes, you know, what exactly. Happens. Yeah. You can just dip <laughs> in and out, which is quite nice. Um, <laughs> We watched quite a lot of TV at the beginning. I hadn't seen any Peaky Blinders before lockdown. And that was great because I really liked that and pretty much watched all of the series in about two weeks. Amazing. Um, um, you're just saying that a little uh, with a bit of a shy face. Uh, I'm not <laughs> at all. Like, I've binge watched everything throughout lockdown. It's acceptable, right? <laughs> I've not a lot else to do, especially at the beginning when the weather wasn't so great either. <laughs> No. Oh, amazing. Well, yeah, I've definitely found some Netflix dramas and documentaries and so on, but um, yeah, I just need more of those now. Yeah, we just need them to keep releasing all the good stuff. Yes, exactly. Although, I, when they release them all in one go, that is dangerous for me. I just get too into it. it. You get some late nights, don't you? <laughs> Especially, the, I don't know if you watched The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I couldn't, couldn't turn that away. <laughs> no, that was really good, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was awesome. It was really, really good. Um, oh, amazing. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for speaking to us on our little lockdown hobby of positivity. Um, the final question I have is for you, do you have any nominations uh, for someone else to come on to positivity? Some positive people in your life? I do. Um, a very good friend of mine, um, who also happens to be a double Olympic medalist. Um, but if you met her, you know, you wouldn't guess that, which is why I think she's really, really fun. Um, Saskia Clark uh, has represented Great Britain at three Olympics, I think. She won a silver and a gold medal. She's a gold medalist in Rio. Um, but more than that, she's just so fun to be around. Um, so we've been talking quite a lot through lockdown, which has been really nice. Um, just all round legend really and yeah. she's whatever's going on with her if she's got loads on or not like she'll always put a smile on your face so that's yeah, yeah. that is just what we need oh amazing I'm excited to speak to her thanks so much well thank you very much for coming on Hannah and we'll see you soon see ya